Does that mean you don't believe in soulmates? I don't know about that. Welcome back to another episode of Better Off Friend. With me today, I have these two pains in the butts. So my little slut muffins, do you love me? Uh, like as friends or lovers? Or like how we are the same person trying to process their deep emotional trauma by disassociating from reality by hosting their own podcast where we are talking with ourselves on topics about life? Uh, more of a joke, but trying to set up something for a talking point. Oh, what was that whole disassociating thing about? Oh, nothing. I don't think they're ready to confront that yet. Well, can y'all tell me what love means to you? To me, love is a feeling of deep affection and connection to someone or something. Hmm. It's an emotion that brings a sense of warmth and joy, as well as a strong desire to care for and support the person or thing that you love. Mm -hmm. Love is to be expressed in many ways, from acts of kindness, generosity, to simple gestures of affection. Hmm. But at its core, love is about finding meaning and happiness in your connections with others, and cherishing those relationships above all. So love for you is a deeper emotional feeling? Yeah, like something you can't explain. I don't know what, but a certain je ne sais quoi. That was redundant. Yes, but it's beautiful. A bit unobjective. Sure, but it feels more real. Well, for me, love means sacrificing some of my own independence to choose to be with someone. Hmm. It's about putting the happiness and well-being of my partner above my own. I see that? And being willing to make sacrifices in order to support them. Hmm. Love is about choosing to be part of someone's life and sharing in their experiences, both good and bad. When I love someone, I am committed to them wholeheartedly, and I am willing to do whatever it takes to make our relationship work. Cool. While love can be challenging at times, it also is the most rewarding experience I can imagine, and I would not trade it for anything. I agree. Thank you for sharing. So it's very much something of sacrifice. Yes, exactly. Is there romance? What about lustful infatuation? Sure, but I'm not saying I'm just in love with someone because we have chemistry. Mm -hmm. It's more of an intentional act. Ah, well, what does love mean to you? Um, I suppose it's sort of a little bit of each of yours, but different. How so? Yeah, please tell. Well, I do agree that this non-objective emotional chemistry is necessary. Mm -hmm. Something like a lustful sexual desire, but that certainly isn't enough. Like, I've been with people that I was infatuated with, but I certainly didn't love them. No, there's quite a bit of intentionality in a relationship that lends itself to be considered love. Can you explain more? Sure. So, you know how you love your friends like you love your family or your partner, right? Yeah. No. Huh? I think love is reserved for someone I have had kids and grow old with. As for friends and family, I'd love them as in I like a lot, but not like-like. So, yours is more of a quantitative shared experience? Almost like love is an act of time spent together. Now that I think about it, I might have to agree, but not to your exact extent. I don't think I love my partner like I love my friends and family. I believe there is a distinction. It's more black and white for me since one has sex and the other doesn't. And yours is more of like love as an act of service. Well, interesting enough for me, I don't associate sex with love. Hmm. Sex is sort of just another activity. It's not how I express love to a partner. Interesting. So you'd have sex with anyone? Sure, but also not what I'm trying to say. Why are you saying that? Love is almost earned for me, whether it's through quality time and or shared experiences. For me, people don't simply get my love just because. What about family? Yeah, I don't feel family just gets my love because we're blood related. Why is that? Family might always be there for you, but they never actually seem to care about me. What do you mean by that? My family always seemed to just like me by the title, the son, brother, cousin, nephew. Ah. But never seem to truly care about me, the individual. The flamboyantly weird soccer playing social entrepreneur adventurer, Brent. Hmm. And as a result, I never felt seen. Thus blood related family or unearned love felt like accepting things that is less than what I deserve. I don't totally agree with that. That's fine. But for me, love is earned. Whether they are physical or emotionally intimate relationships, I need a relationship to serve me just as much as I should serve the other person and the relationship. Oh, what do you mean by that? Sorry, we actually have to pause for a moment to get a word from our sponsors. Uh, we'll be right back. Folks, are you tired of feeling lonely on Valentine's Day? Well, ditch the pinks and reds and embrace the blues with Spira. This Valentine's Day, don't you wait for someone else to show you affection. Embrace the color of self-love and blue yourself. That's right, go and blue yourself. Don't know what to give your friends? Go and blue them. Your mom, blew her too. I blew my boss so hard, he gave me a promotion. We blew our landlord so hard, we got free rent. I blew my dog twice last week. So if you're still looking for that perfect Valentine's Day gift, Head on over to spearinc.com and go blue yourself. And we're back. 
Sorry, so you're asking about the three types or parts of a relationship you have with your friends, family, and things? Hmm, cool. So the first is the relationship with yourself, then the relationship with other persons or things, and last is the relationship with the actual relationship. Okay. Yeah, so in any relationship that you're in, it's important that each part of the relationship is being served or fulfilled, and if any one is neglected, there is an imbalance. Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. Simply put, if you're only serving the other person and the relationship, but not yourself, then you're prioritizing the needs of the other person. Just like if you're only serving yourself in a relationship, you're neglecting the relationship with the other person and such not providing the necessary attention to them as the individual. Okay, so that first type of relationship is the one that we have with ourselves. Yes, it's essential to cultivate a healthy and positive relationship with ourselves before we can form meaningful connections with others. When we have a good relationship with ourselves, we have a sense of self-worth, self-esteem, and self-love. Hmm. We are able to identify and express our emotions, set boundaries, and take care of our own physical and mental health. Okay. All of these elements are vital in creating healthy and fulfilling relationships with others. Okay, that sort of makes sense. It's basically a foundational relationship. Exactly. And the second type was serving others? Sort of. I think it's more like how we interact with the external world. Ah, on the nose. The second type of relationship can include our relationships with our family members, friends, romantic partners, coworkers, pets, hobbies, or even material possessions. In these relationships, we develop connections with other people or things based upon our shared interests, values, and experiences. Okay. We build trust, communicate, and offer support for one another. These relationships can bring us joy, comfort, and, and a sense of belonging. You're getting it. I'm starting to see and agree with you. It does have a sense of purposeful relationship building. Mm -hmm. And breaking it down, our relationships with others as needing to serve us as well as the other person, I believe is an agreeable sentiment. Yep. Since they do have a profound impact on our emotional well-being. Exactly. It's important to cultivate these relationships and nurture them over time. I think it's interesting how you include material possessions in your list. Do you really think we can have relationships with our belongings? Absolutely. We can develop an emotional attachment to certain objects or even places like a childhood toy or a piece of jewelry from a loved one or a place full of cherished memories. Hmm. These things can hold sentimental value and remind us of meaningful experiences or people in our lives. That's a good point. What about pets? They're not human, but we still form strong bonds with them. Yes. Pets are a great example of non-human relationships. Hmm. It's amazing yeah. how the application of your relationship framework is so comprehensive. That's true, but we're not done yet. Hmm? The third and final type of relationship is the one that we have with the relationship itself. Hmm. This relationship may seem abstract, but it's essential to consider. It refers to how we manage dynamics and interactions between ourselves and other people or things. Mm. It's about being aware of the patterns and habits that develop within the relationship and take steps to maintain its health and vitality. Ah. Essentially, in any relationship, we establish a set of agreed upon rules that is the basis of the relationship. We can improve relationships itself by practicing active listening, expressing our needs and desires, and being open to feedback. It's about creating an environment of mutual respect, understanding, and growth. Basically, the three types of relationships are crucial to our own emotional, social, and psychological well-being. Yep. By developing a positive relationship with ourselves, fostering healthy connections with others, and nurturing the relationship itself, we can create fulfilling, meaningful relationships in our own lives. Wow, I love that. Me too. Glad to hear. And from these intentional relationships, there's also a need for alignment of negotiables and non-negotiables. What do you mean by that? Us, sorry, we actually have to pause for a word from our sponsors. Um, we'll be right back. <sighs> Giving up on things that are bad for you is hard. That's why Capnos is here to make quitting smoking easier. Before Capnos, I was depressed smoking three packs a day. Now I'm just depressed. My friends say I should quit seeing him. But my New Year's resolution was to give up on something toxic. So I opted for vapes. There's always next to you. My doctor told me that smoking was adding to my stressful lifestyle. Not only better. Thanks, Cactus. Everyone got more! So this Valentine's Day, if you're looking to quit something that's bad for you and in denial by your ex, <laughs> how about you quit smoking with Cactus? And we're back again. Oh yeah, so negotiables and non-negotiables are exactly what they sound like. 
In any relationship, intimate and non, we have needs that we hold dear that help us with remaining in a mentally and emotionally homeostasis state or essentially regulated. Non-negotiables are things that if we do not have, then they can be damaging and detrimental for us mentally in the long term. They are what we need in order to feel like we're being heard and seen. Hmm, interesting. Essentially, you gotta find someone that meets all your needs while you meet all of theirs. And if there's a disagreement between non-negotiables, then it's not a sustainable relationship. I'd have to disagree. What about compromising with people? My thoughts exactly. Like, I think compromise is important in a romantic relationship because it allows both partners to have their needs and once met. When both people are willing to compromise, it shows that they're willing to work together and make compromises or adjustments in order to have the relationship be successful. It also helps to build trust, strengthen the bond between partners and improve communication. Additionally, compromise helps to resolve conflicts and prevent resentment from building up over time. Mm. Ultimately, compromise is crucial in a romantic relationship because it fosters mutual respect and understanding, leading to a more harmonious and satisfying relationship. I completely agree. Sure, compromise is important. So then for a relationship to work, isn't that part of a sustainable relationship? Yeah, wouldn't the whole negotiable, non-negotiable thing fall apart? Like if compromising a necessary thing for a relationship? Well, in that way, the non-negotiable that you're compromising isn't actually a non-negotiable, but rather a negotiable. Hmm. Often we have a hierarchical scale of priorities for our negotiables and non-negotiables, or wants and needs. Hmm. We have negotiables that we really want, but if you don't get it, it doesn't cause long-term issues for your relationship. Okay. And typically, when we do compromise our non-negotiables, then people will feel unfulfilled in their relationships, which ultimately ends it in complete avoidable heartbreak. Can you give some examples? Sure, so this can be sexual acts, living locations, general habits. Imagine you and your partner have a non-negotiable about location. One wants to live in New York City for the city life, but your partner wants to live near Glacier National in Montana for the hiking. Sure, you could decide to live in New York City and then spend weekends in the Catskills or travel to Montana frequently, hmm. but at the same point, the partner that wants that easy access to nature will begin to feel unfulfilled. Okay. And maybe they'll find other activities to keep their mind off of it, Interesting. but in the end, it will become detrimental to their relationship. Yeah, but people change over time. Sure, but I believe people become more like themselves. Mm. If you see a radical change in behavior or actions, then the person is forcing themselves okay. to be something other than who they are. What if one partner wants kids and the other doesn't? Like the one- So one has wanting kids as a non-negotiable and the other one has no kids as one? Yes, or even if one partner has a non-negotiable about not wanting kids until they're 50 and the other wants it before 30. Well, that's sort of selfish, don't you think? What do you mean? Well, what if your partner wants the kids by 30? It's selfish not to want that for them. Hmm. They clearly want kids earlier than you and it's selfish of you not to want that for them. But why isn't it selfish the other way around? Huh? Why isn't it selfish for the one who wants kids earlier to respect their partner not wanting the kids until later? I guess, but one of them wants it sooner, so it's a greater priority. So they should probably just compromise. Well, that's exactly where the whole negotiable, non-negotiable thing comes into play. Hmm. They each have a non-negotiable, and if one of them compromises on it, they aren't doing what they actually want even if it's a sacrifice related to time. Mm. Plus, I bet you can find any amount of people that have the same qualities as your partner and more closely align with your non-negotiables. So why force someone to compromise themselves instead of embracing them for who they are and perhaps letting them go? Does that mean you don't believe in soulmates? Uh, sorry, we actually have to pause one more time for our sponsors. We'll be right back. Hi folks, it's that time of year again when your ex is posting stupidly cute photos of them in a new boo. And if you're like me, you'd rather be petty than actually grow. That's why I use Fox Marketing. They are the leading marketing agency for slander campaigns. So if you'd rather spend your Valentine's Day systematically destabilizing a really healthy relationship because it's easier to be petty than to actually work on yourself and grow, head on over to foxmarketing.com. And we're back. So as I was saying, does that mean you don't believe in soulmates? Absolutely. So I don't think there are any soulmates. I seriously believe that we have a plethora of potential people that we're highly compatible with. Mm -hmm. And there are 7 billion people in the world. And if you're heterosexual or homosexual mm -hmm. or whatever sexual you are, there are billions of people that potentially could fit that scope. And there's plenty of ways to cut it to get more and more specific with less and less people. But at the very least, since 
there's only so many variations of humans, I'd argue that there must be a couple hundred people that match what you consider your soulmate. Mm. Basically, highly compatible people. Optimistically, I would even say thousands of people that are highly compatible matches of yours. So you're saying there's a lot of people that could be a great match and you'll do well with? Exactly. I think at the end of the day, people just decide to settle for whatever is the most convenient at the time. Mm. I often hear the words love at first sight being thrown around, but I believe these people haven't actually experienced many of these highly compatible people before and end up misinterpreting it as a soulmate. When in reality, it's just a lack of exposure. Okay. So before this person, I imagine their dating life was more of making out with people at the frat, the bar, going on some remotely okay dates. But then bam, they find this one person they're remotely compatible mm, with. Okay. No, keep going. Oh, oh yeah. And I bet if you decide to take a break from the person, they could find two or three other people fairly quickly. I don't know about that. Okay, um, maybe not fairly quickly, but they could find other highly compatible people regardless of how sociable the person is. Like how actually searching they actually are for those compatible people. Yeah, I think the younger you are, the greater the pool of highly compatible people is because you're less formed as a person, so your list of non-negotiables is much smaller. I would make the argument that if you meet someone that you're highly compatible with while you're young and you grow old together, mm. I think that's what people talk about when they mention soulmates, or at least soulmates that they mean when they're young. Mm -hmm. It's like, I met someone who's highly compatible and we remain highly compatible because we developed as a unit. Mm -hmm. But I agree. I think the problem people run into is like, as they get older, the pool gets smaller and smaller, but I also don't believe in soulmates. Yeah, I don't agree with you. Do you think that as people change and evolve, your soulmate is not necessarily going to be able to do that with you? So it's like somebody could be your soulmate for a year, but then not anymore. Oh, interesting. So how does that play out? Yeah, I definitely agree. I think people serve a purpose in your life, okay? I'd say every relationship is another chapter in your book of life. And it could be a one-night stand, a week, a few months, years, decades, but each person serves a purpose. And that goes back to the whole three types of relationships, the relationship with yourself, with others, and the relationship. Hmm. So in those relationships, as long as all the needs are met, all relationships are met, it doesn't necessarily need to teach you something, but it leads to something where you grow in some capacity. It could be introspectively, it could be interpersonally, through some experiences with the people, and thus my argument of what love is. Okay, love is a shared experience. I definitely see how the comparison between ours is how the relationships are intentional by choosing to be with the people, but it developed and not simply just earned. It's not given. I agree. A soulmate is the person you choose in the given moment and they span however long that relationship lasts. Hmm. So realistically, you should have multiple soulmates throughout your life. If they each teach you a different lesson or vastly different experiences. But I don't think that's how anyone I know that have gotten married view it. I believe most married people are of that mindset. View. Or the view that this is my person, this is the one and only. This is my Prince Charming my Snow White, my Cinderella, my whatever. Yeah, I don't think they actually view it as like this over a short period of time because what ends up happening is that relationship ends. A lot of those people end up thinking it's the end of the world and they're absolutely devastated and not to belittle their own feelings and they totally deserve to feel devastated, okay? But if you subscribe to the idea of a soulmate, it kind of doesn't allow you to ever feel like you had the agency to find someone new or move on. It basically puts you into a hole that you cannot get out of. Because no matter who you meet, you already lost your soulmate. Mm. Instead of understanding that you had these amazing experiences that span decades with someone, and then you start a new one after the last one ends, because you have multiple highly compatible people that could be your quote unquote Soulmate. It's just because one has so much more time together and people often equate that as the sole or biggest contributor of equity in a relationship. Well, perhaps it doesn't mean this new one isn't exactly like the other one, but it could be different and equal to the prior. I'm reframing that time doesn't have to be the highest weighted measure of any relationship. Your new relationship can grow in other ways. I was gonna say, it makes me think of love as a formula, or I guess there are a few things you need for love to happen. Compatibility, intent, 
and share experiences. See, this is where I feel more alignment with y'all. Yeah, maybe that's how the three relationships gets tied into it. So I would say a soulmate equals a highly compatible person who's willing to put in the same mutual intent or effort to having shared experiences, whether that's raising a family or just having fun, mm. regardless of how short or long the entire relationship lasts all types of relationships map. But there could be multiple. And yes, there could be multiple. Yeah, it's intentional, but just because it's intentional doesn't make it non-romantic and emotional. Yeah, I think the idea of soulmates is very romantic. Mm. I think it also takes like the ownership off of the individual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, this didn't work out because he was my soulmate or I should stay with this person because they are my soulmate. Yeah, because it doesn't serve you or it doesn't serve your relationship or you don't feel like you can serve them. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think that's a great place to stop for today. What a whirlwind. I agree, for sure. Well, tune in next week for something a little different. I'm Brent. Take care.